Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Sebastian Peake. Welcome back. We're here to discuss one of Sebastian's articles that went up on PCPar.com uh, earlier this week, maybe last week. It's been a long time, I don't really remember. This is a story that you spent a ton of time on. Uh, and I am not sending you on a vacation afterwards, despite what some of the well, commenters we'll talk about it offline. asking for. Uh, this is a what you call a quad-core gaming roundup. How much CPU do you really need? Yes. And it's an interesting question that we get asked all of the time. Uh, and we always kind of, I at least, I personally always have had this kind of, I pretty much, I think I know what, what I should say here, but we haven't really done enough testing to validate it. And what the question is, is based on which GPU I want to buy, right. what kind of processor do I need? Do I need to buy the highest end Haswell processor, like the 4790K Devil's Canyon part? Can I get away with a non-hyperthreaded? Can I go lower than that dual core? What about on the AMD side? You know, those types of things. And you spent, um, I don't really want to know how many hours or days looking at different configurations of hardware to kind of maybe not answer the question fully, but give just because we don't test, we can't possibly test every piece of hardware, despite what some people in the comments wanted to believe. Uh, what, what's, I guess let's start out with like, what is the subset of hardware that you actually did look at? I have a list here on, on the webpage where you look at the processors tested and the mm -hmm. graphics cards tested. And I didn't get into every single piece of hardware. I just covered the basics, the CPUs and GPUs. You've got like a couple from the high end, a couple from the mid range, a couple from the low end, you mm -hmm. know, for both, for both configurations. Uh, and the, some of this was just based on availability, like what parts I already had on hand, what I could easily get. Yeah. Um, what I could, you know, cheaply get. So it was kind of like, I wanted to, to see some affordable parts. We we had talked about, I think it was at the end of uh, last year, kind of year in review show. We talked about the 860K processor from mm -hmm. AMD. It's a, depending on the day, a 74 to $85 CPU. And it's quad core. We have all these games coming out that require a quad core processor now. Right. If, unless you hack the configuration files, it just won't load because yeah. they check core count. So it's like, all right, well, let's kind of throw the book out. Last year, it was kind of the year of the inexpensive dual core processor. Yeah, we had the Pentium G3258, I yeah, think. Yeah, the, the which anniversary was, edition. Yeah. It was fantastic. Extremely, extremely popular. Yeah. Uh, and then, I forget, was a Far Cry 4? Was yeah, one Far of Cry 4 like, launched. Oh, sorry, uh, dual core, can't do that. Dragon Age Inquisition launched. Games started coming over to the PC that we're still expecting right. the multi-core. So you looked at on the AMD side, the Athlon X4 860K, right. uh, the AMD FX 8350, and then the AMD FX 9590, which is their highest end kind of consumer part. Mm -hmm. And then from the Intel side, you had the Core i3 4130, um, the Core i5 4440, and the Core i7 4790K. Again, kind of a, a good... Span there. The Core i3 4130 is that a dual core hyper threaded? It is. I, I kind of debated whether I put it on there or not, but since I had three AMD processors, I kind of wanted to round sense. it out. But uh, quite a few builds I was uh, are using this i3 part, mm -hmm. and uh, you know some commercial systems as well, like the Alienware Alpha, I think it is. Oh really? Use a 4130. So I'm like, all right, I'll throw it in there. Gamers are using it, and we'll see what it can do against the AMD part. Now on the GPU side, uh, again, kind of a, a a it's kind of a range. hodgepodge, yeah. Well, I, I think it covers everything as well as we could. Like the uh, AMD Radeon R9 290X, this is the MSI Lightning Edition. Mm -hmm. The R9 280, and then the R7 260X, ranging anywhere from, you know, $350, $400 down to $137 in the AMD GPUs. Right. And on the NVIDIA side, a GTX 980 ASUS Strix card, which is like $500, bucks, right. to a GTX 770, about half that at $235 to $250, and then a GTX 750 Ti. Uh, at about $150. And <clears throat> you tested each of those video cards, which each, each of those processors, in six different games. Six different at games. Two different resolutions. Two different resolutions, and three of the six games used AMD's Mantle API. So those right. games were also separately tested with oh, Mantle right. at both resolutions. I also tested three different uh, synthetic benchmarks Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and uh, Unigen Valley, Valley no. at uh, Valley, I tested at two resolutions as well. Do you have uh, a specific number of how many benchmarks you ran? I don't even want to know. We should do that math uh, later. I'm, I'm not even counting the ones I threw out because I, I had to stop it or because I got a weird result. I'm like, oh no, this process was running. And, you know, it, it was about six months worth of work. Yeah. On and off as kind of this hobby project. So, 
Uh, I'm going to tell everybody right now that there's way too much data in this article for us to really cover it all in this video. This is more of us trying to introduce to our YouTube subscribers kind of that this video exists and, and kind of an idea of what the data is like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over the 3D Mark results and really get to um, something that that is real world. Let's just look at the first page with, with Bioshock's yep. results, right? So here is a game. Uh, you tested uh, all these games at 1920 by 1080, mm -hmm. as well as 2560 by 1440. Right. At kind of a various preset, this high quality preset. I went 1080. with high quality across the board. So whatever that meant for the game, if I possibly could, I went with a preset configuration. Mm -hmm. I wanted Something easy to reproduce. Right. right. So I'm using all automated benchmarks, so I don't have to worry about variance between runs. I'm using all the same kinds of settings regardless of the game. Okay. So if there was a high preset, I chose it. Any other check boxes were left at their default levels. Some of them were adjusted by the high preset in some games, some weren't. Gotcha. I wasn't like manually turning on anti-aliasing or tessellation or anything like that. I just left it completely vanilla. Right. And then I ran all the benchmarks three times, averaged the results for one resolution and then started the whole process over again with the next resolution. So everything's as, as consistent as I could possibly get it right. to kind of iron out variants. And then what we see in the results, sometimes it looks exactly like you'd expect it to. You'll see the, the cheapest CPU basically mm -hmm. produce the slowest result with a given GPU, right? particularly at the high end. Like what you're going to notice if you start scrolling through these charts, these massive charts. They do go on The for a long shortest time. ones are, I think, 36 results because there were 36 systems, but then right. you add in Mantle, Mantle, for example, and that throws six, another... Yeah, it's... Six more. Yeah. For each graph. So. For each... So yeah. I just want to give an example of what to look for, right? So um, in this graph here, we're looking at Bioshock Infinite sorted by GPU, which means the uh, like the Radeon R9 290X, we see all those results first, and in the next set, we see all the GTX 980 results. And what you see here is that the highest performance result is the highest performance processor, mm -hmm. right? And then it steps down from the 4790K to the 4440 to the 4130. And then we get to AMD's processors, the 9590, 8350, and the X486, or 860K, I right. guess I should say. And with the 980, we see a very similar step down. If you look at these uh, set of six results here, it kind of, you see this improved performance as you add uh, CPU horsepower to the system. Now, what is interesting, what I think is probably the pattern that we see repeated in this example or in these tests, is that once you drop from what I will call those the high-end cards to the mid-range cards, your results actually show much less dependence on CPU scaling. Is that right? Yes. There's, there's very minor scaling that you can see in some of the games. It's more prominent in some, but it's it's very little like you're going from like in in the result with the the r9 280 mm -hmm. you're almost at 100 frames a second and you could potentially move up to 113. 113 yeah so it's it's not extremely significant it's there but it's far less significant right and it's we see a little more. bit maybe a little bit more scaling with the gtx 770 but still a yeah. similar kind of slight and that makes sense because the 770 is a slightly higher performing card overall. Right. So it seems like the more powerful the GPU, the more CPU dependent yep. that performance was. If you look at the lower end cards, the R7 260X, the GTX 750 Ti, very little variance is seen exactly. in those. Um, you can see here, we have this outlier here with the Core i3 4130 is a little bit higher. But if you look at the 4790K averages... 61 frames per second the you know the x4 80 860k average is 60.3 like no very little difference there uh on the low end cards which again is kind of what was something we would expect to see right talking about cpu bottlenecks versus gpu bottlenecks most of these games we're testing are still um gpu bottlenecked at the higher resolutions and less so at the lower resolution at 1080p and as you increase the amount of gpu horsepower uh, you are giving the CPU kind of more room to stretch its legs and thus right. any potential benefits it could offer to the game are elevated or, or kind of just kind of enhanced a little bit, I guess, there. We also have that same data sorted in a different way. Yeah. This is sorted just by raw result, right? The, in, again, successively. So you'll see 
many, many of these, of these collections of graphs. But I think the previous one is kind of more definitive to look for the trends. This is more if you're trying to find your specific combination. Right, and I, the first graph for. is really the graph that was going to end up in this article. But I wanted to include the other one as a reference. So you can right. kind of scroll through and say, well, what, how did this GPU-CPU combination do compared to the other ones? Yep. Find it on the list, and some of the results might actually surprise you a little bit. Yep. So, uh, Real quick here, again, if we look at the same game, Bioshock Infinite, at the higher resolution, Again, this is what I think is indicative of the trend that we saw throughout most of this testing is that once you jack up the frame or the, the resolution of 25 by 14, even with the high end cards, the 290X and the GTX 980, the gap in performance between the low end processor and the high end processor shrinks some. It, it does. doesn't go away completely, but it shrinks some compared to what we saw at 1080p. And then obviously, as you go down to the mid range card, you almost see no difference again. Are there any kind of uh, standouts to this in terms of any particular results that stood out to you that maybe go against that variance? I know we'll, we'll take a look at a Mantle result to kind of see uh, what that gets us as well. Just but. apples to apples with DirectX 11, um, which is what all of these tests were run using except for the Mantle results. Uh, one of the things that kind of stood out overall was how well the Core i5 processor did compared to the Core i7. Mm. You're talking about, and the 4440 was kind of just chosen based on availability. Like any of the low end uh, 4000 series, like Haswell i5s, right. cost about the same. Like whatever the model number happens to be, you're going to find them at around $180, mm -hmm. 180 to 190. So find one of those, and that's uh, about $160 less expensive than the full price uh, 4790K yeah. I was using. Yeah. And yet, in games, all the way up through the GTX 980 and 290X results, it performed admirably. It performed almost as well and sometimes better <laughs> than the Core i7. Yeah. So that was kind of a standout. Like, for gaming, really, an i5, I know it's been said quite a bit, and there's always been discussion about this in the community, but a Core i5 is pretty much all you'd need for a gaming rig, at least according to the benchmarks I ran. That, I mean, and that's, and that's really what I think, if you went into forums and reddits, uh, you would get that advice all of the time. Yeah. That you don't need an i7, just get an i5. But we really hadn't seen a whole lot of data to kind of validate that response. And I think a, a lot of the data that you're showing does do exactly that. Uh, real quick, Sniper Elite 3 is one of the three Mantle games that you tested. At 1080p, again, we're looking at very high frame rates pretty much across the board uh, with these results. But it's important to note that all six of the Mantle results are pretty much at the top here. Right, yes. like they are faster on the 290X than the non than the DX11 iterations of the 290X. Mm -hmm. uh, still consistent, um, but they're not showing a whole lot of, of variance in terms of from one to the other. Right, again, we're at very high very high frame rate, so I don't sure not sure that like kind of tells us much. But um, Sniper Elite 3 maybe not the best example for for that one. Uh, if we look at let's look at the same graph sorted by GPU, yeah, you still get an idea that, hey, that eight core AMD FX8350 with the R9 x actually does give you the total overall best score, which is, yeah. which is, which is pretty nice too. It was interesting. Actually, there's 90 down there too, but. Uh, and what was the, we had Thief in here as mm -hmm. well? Thief is a little bit more CPU bound I've found in okay. the past. So while Sniper Elite 3 kind of had some results that seemed a little off. Right. Thief pretty much across the board uh, Mantle does do very well. The overall results at mm. 1080p with Mantle uh, had it winning out overall with the i7 and the i5. Okay. So that was with the 290X. But sorted by GPU, uh, you'll see the top results with that 290X were all Mantle. Yeah. And kind of exactly in the order you'd expect. The i7, then the i5, then the FX9590. Which was kind of surprising to me that it didn't do a little bit better than it did in these tests. But I have to say, there were issues keeping the CPU running at full speed all the time, too. 220 watt processor. Is 220 it? watt processor. Yeah. I don't know if it was you know power delivery or, or what have you. But this thing was running through a beefy air cooler or a liquid cooler. I'm sorry. It was a Corsair right. H105 running with I'd manually set the fans to high and had, you know, the pump was going full blast. And, you know, it's. The 8350 was very often just as fast. Yeah. So. So, 
you know, I, I think we've kind of said what our overall consensus is with this is, is that for gaming purposes, quad-core hyperthreaded processors don't seem to offer much advantage over just regular quad-core processors no. on the Intel side. Right. Uh, and that benefit actually, de any, any potential benefit actually decreases as you increase your resolution. Right. Again, all these types of things make sense when you say them out loud, but and now it, yeah, you can show it. It all does, theoretically. I wanted some empirical data, just do my own benchmark testing for fun. It started as just uh, <laughs> kind of for fun, but like I, I wanted to see it myself. I wanted to see, you know, if if it made that much of a difference at the low end, for example. Right. Like, would would you, facing an upgrade where, say, you have a $200 budget and you want to upgrade something and make your gaming PC faster, should you buy a $200 video card? Mm -hmm. Or what if you got a faster processor? If you have a, a platform that supports it, or say you buy a motherboard and a CPU combo for a couple hundred dollars, is that going to get you better performance with your video card from two or three yeah. years ago? And if you look at the charts, what you'll see is a, a card that is considered kind of on the low end, though perfectly good for 1080p gaming, you're going to see almost no benefit increasing CPU yeah. horsepower. I, I think we'll see... Uh People reference this and point to this story for quite a long time, kind of demonstrating these points. Uh, and it, and it, my kind of summation for it is, you know, pick the GPU that you can afford and then look at some of this data and base your processor decision on it, right? Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna get a 980 with a 2560 by 1440, you know, screen, your processor decision is actually less important maybe than if you're using a 1080p screen. You're gonna see less differences, whether or not the, the total, the actual frame rate and experience you get um, will, will, will vary depending on the game and settings and all that. But if you're looking at getting the maximum amount of performance, I think uh, you know, starting with your GPU and then looking through the CPUs and, and figuring out where your selection kind of fits with the six that we, mm -hmm. that we picked out. It's kind of about finding that bottleneck point. At yeah. what point is it? And it's going it to change with games. It's going to change with Windows 10. It's going to change some. Exactly. DirectX you have, 12 You have a new out. API coming out, DirectX yeah. 12, which is, you know, by all accounts, going to reduce the dependence on uh, system overhead. Mm -hmm. So the CPU can kind of get out of the way a little bit more. Because right now there is a point where you, you need a faster CPU to, yep. to, you know, let these GPUs really shine. But that kind of is only at the high end. So... So uh, this is the point where I say, again, we have yeah. way too much data to talk about here. We're not going to go over all the other games, uh, but you guys should definitely go to PCPer.com and read Sebastian's article. We'll have a link included somewhere here and in the description below as well. A ton of great data. Very good job on all the testing. I uh, hope you didn't have anything else to do during those six months. So. It's all... I've blocked it out of my mind. It, that's like it never happened. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And if you have any thoughts or comments on what we should do on this type of stuff next, make sure you leave them in the uh, section below. Thanks, guys. Thanks.